Hey everyone, I am Kate here with another conversation. However, today I have Josiah here with me and Josiah is going to share with us his purpose, some of his mentalities. I also want to just share that Josiah is a friend of the family, a friend of Javier's. We've known him for about 10 years. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and get into a conversation with Josiah. Josiah, also I want to have you state for them your age? I am 18 years old. My name is Josiah. And I just wanted him to point that out because I think that what we're going to be discussing is really important, not only for anyone's mind, but even more so for like our younger generation. And I think it's really great to have someone here that shares in a mentality that is, um, or that can be rather advantageous for us. So again, let's just go ahead and get into some conversations. So um, Josiah, I know this is your first time more or less being on camera and doing this, and this is essentially something that he wants to do for himself in the long run. Um, so you may be feeling an, a little nervous. <laughs> I am Definitely. too, it's only like my millionth video, but that's okay. Um, so just, we can disregard the camera, we can just play and have a conversation. So. You know, I know earlier we were talking about virtues. We talk about the law or the law of attraction. Um, but just in general, let's get started with what you feel your purpose is, what you want to do with humanity. Okay. Well, I would say that everybody has a feeling and a need to help somebody. And um, within coming, within that being someone's purpose it makes them feel good and it's not something that we want to uh, look at as something that's like work or anything of that nature uh, my your purpose should be towards something that uh, motivates you that the reason why you get out of the bed in the morning um, most so people I like to look at it as service yeah service to humanity instead of work like how can I go about my day today and serve the greater good or humanity? How can I be a better individual? So not work, but service. Mm -hmm. Well, service is um, service rendered to other people is what it plays a, an important role on our income as well. So without getting too much into like income and things of that nature, the service that we, like, I feel that we're all here to do God's work. And uh, to me, God's work is service and service to other people. What? Because essentially, we're all selling something and we're selling our service to other people. And when it comes to selling our service to other people, we're either selling our skills, our time, our effort. We're, we're selling a lot of things. And we can. Our uh, talents. Yeah, I mean, talents. in all actuality, too, right? Our yeah. talents. Our talents. Uh, I, I believe also that people have a, like a unlimited amount of talent and ability within themselves that is always trying to seek expression through greater, greater ways, which would be its physical or monetary equivalent. Hmm. Um, when, if, if you want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just know, Get you know, um, we can sit and we chat. I know it gets a little kind of like, what do I do now? Whoa. The camera's on. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I know earlier, earlier we were discussing virtues. And I think that it's really important for people to have an idea of their virtues in all actuality, right? Like you had mentioned earlier, which I thought was a nice contrast. Um, devil's virtues or uh, the, like the, the more, seven deadly virtues yes so yeah. deadly virtues the more negative mm -hmm. virtues however there are positive virtues that we can apply to our life so virtues um i know that you dabble and you play with and you utilize the law the law of attraction right yeah. so i think that that would be something to even just kind of discuss and Really, the fact that you're younger and that you're playing with these ideas so early on, but you're not playing with them, you're actually setting them into motion. 
I think that that in and of itself is a lot that needs to be shared with humanity. So, um, you know, what do we want to talk about this side? You know, um, if we just forget the cameras here, um, I and see, we I see just we have can, a conversation. Yeah, uh, about who we are. Okay, I like that. So, um, who am I? That's like question that most people ask or they are being asked and most or asking people, themselves or asking themselves most people can't come to what it would in terms of what who are they uh, I think it has to be known for everyone or at least they have to know that they're a spiritual being they live in a physical body and they have an intellect well and, and it's in a physical world right because yeah. we can't disregard the reality well mm -hmm. where's the body that you're speaking of well it's in this physical world right well, so yeah there are all these concepts and things that play into that idea which I agree with but I think we also have to consider this physical mm -hmm. world yeah the physical world that we create and we, we call create. reality really yes well um, I think it was James Allen that said we create our our reality is what's real, and, or let me just say, if if we can change our reality by changing, or we can change our reality by changing the way we perceive it, or something like that. Um, but it's the way we. I can't even get into it right now. Hmm. I have um, a lot of knowledge on the subject. But like I said, through practice and me keep trying to express it, it would be able to come out more smoothly and that way I'll remember everything because I know I've read that entire book. I've read Psycho Cybernet. I've read plenty of books and I've listened to oh, like over a thousand hours of recorded material on the subject. Um, and it's all within me. So, like. So let me ask you this. Why have you put forth all of that effort? Why are you listening to all of these things? Like, what is your premise? I, I could imagine that it's to be better, right? To be better. So what does being better mean to you, if my conclusion is correct? Well, um, I go off a good quote is, uh, good, better, best. Never let it rest until the good's better, until the better's best. Nice. Um, Who qu who's that quote from? I would. I don't want. It's okay. Get, I don't you want to get the name wrong. Don't have to speculate. It's but okay. But I do know it's he's okay. he's an Olympic okay. he's an Olympic uh, gold medalist. Okay. In, uh, good quote. His story is great. It's a great story. It's a great story. Super. Great. I think it could be. I could, it could be Phil Goldfine. Not sure, but. That is, that is a good story to tell He me. makes no guarantees. <laughs> no guarantees at all. But, um, yeah, like, uh, what I, uh, I, I usually, what I do see myself doing is something similar to, I'm not sure if any people that watch uh, are familiar with Bob Proctor, but I do watch okay. a lot of Bob Proctor, and I am a fan of his, uh, his teachings. And okay. I wouldn't say they're teachings of his because they're not his. They're they're everybody's once you have them in your head. But the way that he um, he teaches people about themselves and the way he does it and what he because he spent he spent fifty years. It's probably at fifty five now. Fifty five years of studying about him. His story is good. I can't really tell another man's story, but um, he's something definitely should look into um, but yeah yeah so his story encourages you it oh yes most definitely okay. encourages me because um, he's someone that came from not a good background uh, like many of us in some, some sort of ways because everyone goes through things in their life no matter good life or bad life rich life or poor life um, he shows that no matter what you've been subjected to in the past you can create your own future and so you can persevere persevere yeah through through what's been 
given to you or what you've already created. So that's something similar to what I did. Uh, I always had a thought that there was something more out there that I wasn't going to just be stuck with what I've been given. Um, and it came to me in many different ways. <laughs> so uh, it started off, I would say, Well, if we're going to go back to childhood friends and how they, they influenced me because it influenced me a lot through school, that's what really played a big part because through school I got not, we would say, not so good grades. I wasn't intellectually. Um, I wouldn't use the word intellectually. Nah, intellectually. I would say maybe academically. Academically. Because yeah. there is a vast difference between the two, and I don't think that you have any issues intellectually. Uh -huh. And I'm not saying that you have issues no, academically. I need this. I need to know but that. I just feel that, you know, um, the Academic. semantics and the words that we use are very important. And to mm -hmm. say that intellectually, maybe, you know, according to the school, well, no, that's not intellect. No, that's academic. Yeah, academic. That's a whole, that's education. Mm -hmm. That's completely different. Mm -hmm. And I just don't feel that you should weigh your intellect mm -hmm. against an academic type of setting, per se. So yeah, that's I just perfect. wanted to kind of point I need, that I out. I need to know that because <laughs> that, like, raises me that, you know, I have to be mindful of what I'm saying. Yes, sure our words are very important, right? Yeah, very and so, powerful. like, yes, yes, that's extremely important. How we use our words, how we define ourselves, our concept of ourself, right? Which goes mm -hmm. into our expectations for our reality, in my opinion. Um, I don't know if you agree with that or if no, you No, I agree have. with that. Yeah. So, yeah. Figuring it all out is a test. Um, I would say uh, maybe we could talk about some opportunity. Well, wait, you were talking oh. until I cut you off. <laughs> no, 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 I need but to But the, um, the school thing and, well, oh, yeah. I found it interesting, too, because you were going to discuss what seemed like the influence that your peers, mm -hmm. maybe not even friends, but your peers at school had played into perhaps your mentality and I always wonder, is it like our family that plays into our ideas? Is it our peers? Like what well, ultimately is going to be that driving force for us to prove who we are, right? And two, I think that that force should be ourself, but we become so distracted with wanting to maybe impress our peers or our parents, our family. But anyway, as you were saying, yeah. um, <laughs> I get very, very, like, on a tangent, sidetracked. <laughs> no, that's good. I need that because this is, like, like to way, the way I see it is you're, like, my mentor, you know, because even we have, you have amount of knowledge that we, we both have a good amount of knowledge and with being able to, like, communicate it with each other and being able to correct each other or see our different views of that knowledge and how it was said uh, it, it's good and I don't have no one to talk about this stuff because my family's they don't they're not really encouraged by these stuff I mean, they they hear them and they understand them but they think that life is already subject giving them what they've got and that's what they're stuck with um, I don't have many like other people and then I you know I can't I don't really talk to other people when I was doing what I was doing, um, you were subjected. I didn't have my friend. Well, and I think that's really important. I think that that is something I have found just in general, you know, finding people that are going to relate to a certain mentality. Um, and this mentality is very different. So for people to, I think you have to find people you're comfortable sharing your mentality with right yes and sure. you can find that with a lot of people but then again to just be able to openly share that I think is important so I want to say thank you and I appreciate that yeah. you're sharing you know yeah. I love to talk we all know this yeah. so and I love to listen and give my opinions as well uh, and it is a two-way street like I'm open to questions you know we kind yeah. of discussed that prior to this video but um I, I you touched on wisdom and I find it interesting because I don't think that 
I think that wisdom comes with age, but I also feel that we have a lot to learn from everyone and anyone. Like your story is going to be completely different from mine. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you have things that I can, you know, yeah. take into account. And, yes. you know, you've already brought me this book to read. So um, you've also, I want to really quickly discuss these lists that you were making. Okay. You were making these thankful list, grateful list, things he was appreciative of in his life and I feel like that also sparked um, some influence in my son Javier's life because then he was writing lists that he was you know thankful for That's good. but that also then encouraged me to restart my list for the yeah. month of November and I did for about a week and then I quit but I want you to know and I just I've done it for so long that you know um, but it was really kind of refreshing to see and you, I want you to know that you encouraged me and you inspired me to kind of get back to these basics of what am I thankful for? What am I grateful to have in my life? What am I blessed to have around? So just going back to the wisdom um, and what we can share and how we can influence others. I want you to know that like you've also inspired and encouraged me. So thank you. That's great to hear. I'm glad to hear that. Um, yeah, with when it comes to gratitude, what I do every day is something that I got inspiration from Bob Proctor. Uh, it's write out 10 things that I'm grateful for in the morning. Um, sometimes if I'm busy in the morning, I'll have to do it at night or throughout the day. Uh, I write 10 things that I'm grateful for. I usually don't make them the same things. Sometimes they are the same things. And that's okay. Um, after practice, because I've been doing it for about four months, I, it could be longer of how long I've been doing it. It could be nine months, but to, uh, due to indecision, I was stopping and going and not being persistent what I was doing but I write the 10 things I'm grateful for and beside it I write expectant so gratitude and expectant so life gives you sometimes what, what you expect because I don't want to get too much into the, the Bible and I can't really get too much into it because I have yet to read more stories and understand them as I did it understand the one where Moses led the people to but when we talk about expectant and what do you expect, I usually write either the accomplishment of my goal, uh, maybe something that, maybe somewhere that I'm expecting to move, or maybe a raise that I'm expecting, things of that nature, or maybe I'm expecting someone that I want to meet. And, uh, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really fun. It's fun to be aware and look for that person, you know, and whenever they come upon, because you know they will, after knowing the laws, you know, they will come. And just as much as the other things you expect, because if that's what you're looking for. So to touch base on that really quick, it's not just the good that we're expecting. I think it's really important that we point out, and I don't know if you've come acro across this, or have yet to accept the responsibility, you know, if you're in control of the good, well, you're essentially in control of the bad too. So with our expecting, I think it's very vital to know that if you're expecting bad, you're going to get that too. So why not expect good, right? And so it sounds like when you're writing these lists, you're really prioritizing, like that you're expecting the betterment, the good, right? Yeah. yeah, that's great to to have me thinking about because sometimes I do things that I don't know why I'm doing them, but I do them. And uh, I got the habitual habit that I've created to do the things that better me. And I just do them habitually, like um, maybe riding home from work, like some people choose to listen to music this time that I choose to go no music and just think about my goal or read my goal aloud the whole entire way home or listen to 
positive messages, affirmations, or uh, knowledge. So I want to know, um, it seems like you have implemented this in your life. Yeah. I don't feel that it has always been an influence in your life based off of previous conversation. I feel like this is something you've had to come to learn on your own and then implement it into your life. So how long would you say that you have been practicing this and implementing it into your life? Well, and I just want to say also that in all actuality, we are having a conversation about manifesting and the control and power that we possess as individuals. And we manifest from the moment we're born in all actuality. It's just really a matter of when we become conscious of manifesting and then implementing that consciousness into our reality. So I guess to rephrase it, when did you become consciously <laughs> um, an advocate in a sense for your own life and you really consciously started to apply these laws? Does that make sense? Because although you've been applying them your entire life, but what, like, what has it been four years? Has it been, and then not only that, so two questions. How long has it been since you've been implementing it? And the second question, have you seen a difference in your life, an improvement um, based off of having implemented these well, things? I was trying to utilize my memory and think about how long it's been. Uh, I think I've been definitely underestimating the time that, it, that how long have I've known these ideas and I'm very com comfortable to say that I've probably known these ideas for around a year okay. and, and adding on right now. So I stumbled upon after reading The Outwitting the Devil, I came, I became, uh, I started thinking of maybe there's something, you know, that like, or maybe there's things that are, that I should not be doing. It really didn't play that much of a part. It didn't play that much of an influence in my life after the fact that I read the book, but during when I read the book, it kept me, it kept me thinking. Um, what really struck me was the secret. Uh, it wasn't more of, I think actually I had the same, uh, I would say, view of the secret as everyone else. Was. Which would, what do you feel that was? Because uh, to speak could, on behalf of everyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really thought that I just, you know, if I just sit down and see what I wanted in my head, I could just have it. And um, I figured out that that wasn't the truth, but it was part of the truth. It's, um, it comes a lot more effort and a lot more thinking than you think it does for you to have something to come in your life. And some things are easy to obtain. Because I wouldn't say everything's easy to obtain. But uh, small. See, that's his thinking, right? Yeah. Not everything's easy to attain. Well, well. Th but I'm just, I'm just, I just want to point yeah. out that momentarily, you know, your your mentality. You just told me not everything's easy to at obtain. Well. But is that because of your mentality? Like, if my mentality is everything's easy to obtain, then that very well could be my mentality and my truth. Mm -hmm. But I just want to point out, I wonder how much further things would change for your reality if you believe that, um, you know. Well, uh, if we go back into that, I would say that, like, I wouldn't, when it comes down to things being easy to obtain, let's say you're trying to, uh, you're trying to change your mind. And you're trying to get rid of these ideas that you've been subjected to, let's say, for 30 years of your life. You might be 30 years old, and you're trying to change your mind to the betterment of yourself. 37 here, it's still working on it. All right, so <laughs> let's say... It's a never-ending process. <laughs> let's say one year you decide that this is your year, and you're going to make the change, and that year is your year. You're going to look back, and you're going to think, well, it was very easy. But why didn't I do it? Or and why didn't I do it sooner? Yeah, why didn't I do it sooner? That's for sure. 
Um, and when it comes down to that, it's like, well, when I say things are like, actually, you know, I probably, it's probably no justification. For I'm not I'm even asking about. for one in all actuality. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to just point out that like, like you have this idea and mentality in regards to, well, things can be hard to obtain or whatever. Like that's your mentality. I wasn't. I just wanted to it show you where there may be a discrepancy well, in your own mentality, and maybe not. Like, you're allowed to have that. I'd rather not think that things are hard to obtain, personally. Well, to a degree, things can be hard to obtain, because, well, depending on how you're, um, how you're, like, controlling yourself, because one thing that I'd say that I'm working on right now is not letting my environment control. One thing I've already surpassed is treating everyone with respect and nicely. Like I, just, I don't show a negative attitude to no one, um, but I do because hmm. the, the negative uh, attitude I show is to my family, and it's because it's just of ignorance that I have in trying to change someone for so long and they don't want to change. But but working from an outside, mm-hmm. not the inside. But but not everyone wants to change. That's what you have to understand. And not <laughs> oh, everyone there is... are so many topics we can touch on right now, Josiah, because... <laughs> well, everyone oh. wants to change, but not everyone's willing to change. So no there are so many ideas when it comes to... May I have a piece? Yes. Um, like, other people, right? So a few of the ideas and theories are that you are me pushed out. Everyone in this world is me pushed out. So then I am then responsible for everyone and they're going to act accordingly. Um, The other one is that other people don't have free will and they act according to our mentality about them. So for example, um, you know, these ideas that you have with your family, they're really only existent because you're having this continual conversation and mentality in your head about them. But what happens when you change those conversations? Sorry, where'd you learn that? The books that I read. <laughs> <laughs> Which book? And, um, Sorry, I don't know. Go no, ahead. it's okay. It's probably one of the two. And I couldn't name them, but like I'd probably mess them up. So, But I'm more than willing to share them with uh, you. Yeah. And then also just of like... Um, researching and ideas and theories and other people's ideas and theories in all actuality because really we don't know what this world is so we conjure up these ideas and concepts <clears throat> and I think too when you put those into practice so for example if I am thinking about family and I have these negative concepts who's the one creating them? I mean, like, you know, um, what conversations are you having in your mind already about these things? So when you go back and you start to examine your mentality in regards to these outer people and influences, I think that we can start to see if you're willing to take the responsibility that you're responsible. But I think that that's the other thing. Oh. People don't really want to take responsibility for, you know, the bullshit in their life. Like, oh, I didn't want to create a DUI for myself. But I did, and you can see that on my YouTube channel. But it well, goes back to those expectations and all this bullshit that we're pushing out, positive or negative, there's going to be a reaction and a reflection in our reality from our mentality with people as well. Well, that just sparks... Uh... A flame in my 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 mind because then I think about yeah what is my perception of these people and that perception is what's causing them to act how I perceive them to act and that's responsibility <laughs> <laughs> I mean but it is it right is, yeah. I mean mm-hmm. yeah that's you're like oh shit there we have the I see it right there I'm already driving home like oh I'm gonna have this conversation <laughs> <laughs> Right? Like, you're predicting it in a sense, maybe. I don't know. I Again, I don't know. Examine your own thoughts. Examine the people. And then change them and see if anything changes, right? Well, yeah, that comes with, um, I would say, one thing that I'm trying, and I'm, I would say that I'm progressing 
every day and is looking at everyone as a, just like me, uh, as a child of God. And, and and understand that I see them. I can't get into it because I don't have it with me and I don't have anything to draw it. But um, I see them for what what it is. You know, I see their attitude for what it is. I don't see it as negative or positive. Um, and that's one thing I'm working on. And that goes with I created. So it just is. How they act is just me. It just is. But it is essentially dependent upon your thinking about it mm -hmm. in all actuality. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that's something that definitely I'll, I'm, I wouldn't say work on changing that I now have changed now that I know about it. Um, well, and I think too, it's important to point out that these changes that we have to make they're mental, right? And we get into mental habits, just like we get into physical habits. Um, so it's really about changing that physical, no, 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 the mental <laughs> habit and the mental thinking that a lot, a lot of times I think it's easier to revert to instead of contending with yourself to change. Like, oh, I'm having this idea, um, you know, let's talk about money for a second because that's a really big thing. So a lot of people struggle with scarcity, poverty, lack of money. That's because they're thinking that, right? Mm -hmm. But how easy would it be instead of to think like, I don't have enough money to just think I have plenty of money. But people don't want to even try sometimes to change that simple thought process. And I think it's interesting that people will defend these very things that they don't want. Like, oh, I don't want to be poor, but like, I'm poor because uh, just tell yourself you're rich or you have plenty of money. It's so easy. <laughs> That's my opinion, right? Yeah, and it works well for me. Influence. But I believe it can work well for anyone. It's a matter of applying a different mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do believe in that. And I'm actually in the process of shifting my mentality um, it's called the money consciousness and that's what I'm developing because all through childhood and teenage years and I'm still in my teenage years but I'm deciding to change that my last my 18 and 19 year, my 18 and 19 um, years I'm going to uh, develop a money consciousness for, for the rest of my life and just continue with that and the money consciousness go ahead you said you're going to develop. Well, What's sorry. preventing it? Do you already know where going I'm going? Going to develop, I would, I would say, uh, it's really nothing. It's already developing because I'm already seeing it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's already, it's already developing. You can't have what you don't have. So when you're like, well, I'm going to develop. I mean, you can develop that now. And mm. you corrected that already. I just wanted yeah, to point thank that you. out. That I'm developing right now. <laughs> I don't know. I'm upset that I didn't say it right away. <laughs> I'm but sorry. No, I don't right. want you to feel said. like I'm hounding you. No, no, or, I need you know, it. No, I, I know. mean, because like I said, I'm leaving, and um, in this new place that I'm going to, I want to. I already have me a, a you know a new phone that I can uh, start using. Um, whatever it's called, if it's a newer phone, then I can start adding programs or whatever I need on it, videos. Uh, I want to get me a computer actually. That way I can FaceTime people. Um, record videos. Record videos now that I know it looks this good. Uh. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you know, maybe when when I get my computer, me and Kate can make videos from opposite sides. Oh, that would be yeah. really cool. Yeah. What a great idea. I like yeah. that. That's you know, fun. We do something yeah. like that. And um, we can talk further on these ideas. And like I said, we're going to, we're pretty much already growing together right now. If that's what explain it as because we're both talking about these ideas and one thing that I've learned is the reason why I am what I am and that I've been so in love with these ideas is because and I understand the secret is because the secret I found is being told to you in a thousand different ways in a thousand different 
times. There might even be 10,000 different ways in 10,000 different times. Because it's all essentially saying the same thing. It's like religions. It's like, no, you're like, a, the center of town is the truth, right? And okay. everybody's around this. That's around the, the center of town and if they're looking and if they're looking for the truth they get to the truth and it was essentially all in the same place it was in the center of town the same length and same everything so that's the way i look at religions i look at as every single one has the truth in it that we are spiritual beings we have an intellect and we live in a physical body and then with this intellect we can create the lives that we want the reality that we intend to perceive um and, and that's influenced me because I've heard these ideas in some somewhat similar to these ideas over and over and over. You could be more, you could do more, you could have more, you are more. Things like that is really just boosted me because if we're going back to, like I said, uh, peers that influenced me throughout my childhood, which was my family, friend, friends and family, and um, teachers, as well as School coaches. Mates. Okay. So, going into that, well, when I was growing up, I always had a desire to play football and play in the NFL. And I was naturally good at football without pads and playing at the park. We played probably every day for a year, so 365 days of just continuous tackle football at the park every day because that's what we love to do. And if it wasn't... 360 well if it wasn't every day for a year then it was 365 days plus that we played football in that park at blue park um 512 windsor lane that's where i lived the number two i've always i just had a desire to play football and then when i got to the seventh grade i i played football and i just wasn't good at it with pads and that's and mm. and i and i blamed it on pads but it was just really that that's not something i wanted and I ended up quit doing it, and it was something that I loved to do, but not something that I, I felt that I got. I put my uh, my success in the hands of other people. I I thought maybe if my parents would support me more or they would help me more. This is a good point. I yeah. like that um, you expressed that this was something you felt you really wanted to do, mm-hmm. and then when you did it, and then you really did it with pads, you found that maybe you were doing it for other people and not so much for yourself yeah not and not and i think that's really important because like that's not a true core value for you yeah um i'm gonna turn on the light because it's getting kind of dark yeah and i would say not only that but um it's just the fact that that is something I really, really wanted to do. I really wanted to play football, and it, I loved to do it. So saying that I didn't love to do it and that's not what I wanted to do is a lie. Huh. Uh, I really loved to do it, but I just, like I said, I put the success of my dreams in someone else's hands because I really didn't know how to create my dreams or even, I didn't even know what dreams were. Uh, so I I just, I wasn't good. and. The, the point that I wasn't good is because I never really seen myself actually being a football player and doing what I had to do to, you know what I'm saying, be a, a football player. Um, but I, I shortly quit that, and I moved on to a lot of sports in my life that I thought was going to be my purpose, like as, for example, Muay Thai, kickboxing. Uh, Which, I, if I'm not mistaken, you're actually really good at the yeah. boxing thing. So, wait, I'm kind of hearing that you take on these ventures, mm-hmm. and you are actually good at them. Yes. But then you kind of decide, no, nah, it's not for me. Well, that or something else happens, an outside circumstance happens. So, for example, um, with kickboxing, I did, after the tragedy had happened... I did move on to other gyms. Um, I just felt that I was doing it with the people. Like, the reason why I love to do the kickboxing and the Muay Thai was because the environment I was around and seduced to, which was Mm. a good family, just people that love you and that care for you and that, like, express different ways. They were Hawaiian people, and um, some were from Guam, I think, and, and they just, they come from, 
you know what I'm saying, like loving people. You know, before you leave, you hug a each other. A certain type of culture. A certain type of culture. Um, so their culture was it was loving and it, and it taught. It, it sounds showed, yeah. also inclusive. Inclusive. What is like it? belonging. Like everybody is welcome. So inclusive, oh, yes. inclusive instead of exclusive. Like no, you don't look a certain way, or you don't speak a certain way, or you this, or you that. Mm-hmm. It was more of like everyone's welcome. This is an inclusive environment. Yeah. Um, you know, like mm-hmm. you felt included, basically. Yeah. That's for sure. And um, a sense of belonging also kind of stems from inclusion. Yeah. Uh, and I really just loved to do what I was doing. I, I guess I was just naturally good at it, and that that pre- played another part in me wanting to continue it. So. What um, what I tended to do was just float around for a while. I started to, um, when I was actually involved in these ideas as of, uh, like, um, the kickboxing, I didn't go outside much because I, I, didn't, I didn't like my neighborhood or I didn't like the, 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 like, what you were associated with by being out in that type of environment. Okay. So <clears throat> I didn't much like the environment that I lived in nor that I lived from outside of with which was outside environment. Um, I tended just to stay away. But when it came down to me getting rid of the kickboxing, I tended to go out more. And I tended to get involved with the people that I didn't like before. Mm -hmm. And I started to act like them and start creating my own ways of seeing life through maybe some of their beliefs that I, I... put inside myself so they didn't know where they were going and they know nothing about knowing where they're going so it's not saying that but it's it's who I was around that I was and I wasn't around very good people so therefore I wasn't a good person either I was I I had a spiritual uh, yeah spiritual experience that showed me that the people I was around wasn't the people that were the best of my um, you know, talents, capabilities, capabilities persona that, in general? <laughs> yeah, they weren't the best. They weren't the best <clears throat> of my my options, and that I shouldn't be around them. So I not like. <laughs> I got around new people, and um, I found later on. Well, I'll get into that. But when I got with the new people, I said maybe you know maybe this is me this is what i want to do for the rest of my life and this is what i want to continue and, and be more of so i let it influence my life to an enormous degree and it was programming me to be someone i was not but i feel that all of that had to happen because you had an open mind because you were willing to accept mm-hmm. concepts beliefs mentalities theories that were different from your already programmed mentality. So I think that having an open mind really comes into play with um, yeah, that I, I would being say, able to make those changes. Yeah, and that's something that I've never thought of. Yeah. Is it okay if I answer? Yeah, you're fine. So just going back to the virtues that James Allen mentions in his book and then me having to really kind of figure out what those virtues were or what they were meant to me and um we were just kind of right now just discussing temperance and that is more or less self-restraint so there's a way we can trigger this light (laughs) there are two lights but it's not (laughs) no maybe turn it off and on on the inside no okay whatever Um, so temperance is self-restraint, essentially, so, uh, being able to just more or less moderate, and so, for example, like, I can't wake up and get stoned, I can't wake up and drink, because I have shit to do, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I'm not a functioning alcoholic or stoner, (laughs) like, I have to do that shit and then be non-functional, but, um, I think it just kind of goes back to 
virtues and those virtues really come into play with the concepts that we have of ourselves. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, along with what I was talking about. Is that you wanted to and you like to deliver things, messages, oh, yeah, purposes. With, well, with expression. Um, naturally. Without any sort, no, that is not mine, but I will take it. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it because I don't know who's Okay, thanks. Lighter Free lighter, I thanks. I guess I just be, I swear to God, I just steal, I just steal lighters. Yes, oh, that's, um, but, um, yeah, if, maybe something I would like to talk about is something that I'm going to be uh, thinking about later on is, uh, like I said, how can I do this more comfortable? And not more comfortable because I'm, I'm really more comfortable. Do what? Do this is what, what is, I'm speaking to oh, you and expressing. The, okay. I wouldn't say, use the word comfortable because I'm already comfortable. You know. But uh, I, I mean, I there's a level. Calm of, okay. is what I want to be. It's calm and serene to just explaining these ideas. And I think it's like, like I said, knowing more about me, but knowing more about my past and how to talk about that past in, in uh, educate not educational ways, but inspirational, knowledgeable ways go. so they can learn from it as I did. Um, with uh, figuring out this, because I have an opportunity coming up. Because So a really great opportunity that happened in my life that will maybe think about something, it will maybe give you to think about, like, wow, that's, that sounds great. Um, like I said, I've been studying these for two weeks straight just persistent on what the book is saying and doing that to the word and so studying what studying uh thinking grow rich okay yes and okay. i i i was reading psycho cybernetics before and then i had to stop psycho cybernetics because i just had the like the real big urge to read thinking grow rich okay and, and finish it because i've never finished it and i actually bought these books on september 14th, which was my birthday, I got birthday money, and I, I went to Barnes & Noble and purchased these books, uh, in which I have, so when I got those books, like, like I said, I just got into them. I would, I would say that I wasn't reading as much as I should have been, but I was reading. So now, like, the psycho, psycho, the psycho cybernetics is, uh, is like how you, it's, it's, it's a lot about like the mechanical system within you or technological system within you. I can't get too much into it because... That's okay. We're I'm not here to promote their books yeah. either. But I'm here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm here. It's okay. I just... I mean, I, I understand the importance that they play and you've drawn thing, things from them. No. That's important. But. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I would say with, when it comes down to the... the thinking grow rich that it has me... It, it's like the last puzzle piece I got from puzzle to complete on what I need to do that way I can better serve do for my purpose and like I said my purpose is to uh, render the service or improve the service that I render to my family my company my country my community and ultimately the world so within doing that you need money and sure. you and just within living it, it costs a lot to live and that's not saying that it caught, you don't have enough to. Hey, live what's with a lot life. when you have five million dollars? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so if, what's if, a it lot? A lot, <laughs> if it costs a lot, if it costs a lot, but a lot the average person. The, we'll but average but person. you're speaking for yourself, right? So I'm it's interesting when you start to listen to how other people speak. Yeah. But and you're like, well, I'm not speaking for myself, but you are. And what yeah. what you're saying are all the. I just I'm not trying to criticize no, you, not. Josiah. I want you to understand that. I simply am wanting to point out where your mentality mm -hmm. is telling me that it takes a lot of money to live. Yeah. But that's your mentality when you don't have a lot of money. Do you see? What, well, so if you have a lot of money, is it a lot of money to live? And what is a lot? So I, I'm not questioning that. Mm -hmm. I'm simply asking you to maybe question what a lot is and what amount of money it would take for you for a lot to not be an issue. Does that make sense? Well, when it comes down to money, um, I have a fabulous quote by Earl Nightingale, which he said, most people want more money than they really do, and they settle for a lot less than they can get. Or and, even really are worth, in my opinion. Yeah. And um, 
Well, I, everybody's rich too. You know, everyone's born rich. We're just short of money. That's the way I see it. Again, this is. <laughs> well, do you want to be short of money, no, Josiah? No, that's not what I'm saying. Look, I'm saying. But you are saying. No, do that's you not. See? Look, because I'm saying everybody's rich, including me, including you, but. We're just short of money. The people that are. Saying, but why does that even have to be said. any sort of well, why does like, it have to be contrast said? in your well, mentality? Well, because somebody will be asking, well, you say everybody's rich. They think that means that they were born into uh, a great, You don't uh, ever have to explain yourself. And when you start to explain yourself, mm -hmm. you build these contrasts against mm -hmm. the very thing that you, you are simply trying to present. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because right now you're telling me, like, you're born rich, but there's a shortage of money. No. Do I, those two things, that, but did you not say, maybe I'm but mistaken. But I didn't mean shortage. I meant people but do are you short see how of those, money. But do you see how those two yeah. things do not go together? Yeah. yeah so which one is it? Well, I mean, because you're telling me two different things. To me, to me, it's both. Well, because there's some people. But just like it can't be both. I mean, it can. Well, it can I'm, all day long. Well, that's what it will to the group. But to what extent does okay. you cannot allow that shortage to apply to you? And when you apply it to we, which is everybody in a general population, you're also applying it to yourself. So you're again telling me two oh, different yeah, things. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, and again, I'm not trying to create, I just no, want to point makes, out that like there's sense. a flaw. You're telling me we're all born rich, but then you're telling me there's this shortage. Like that doesn't, to me, that doesn't make sense. Maybe it makes sense to you, but I'm like, well, wait, if I'm born rich, why is there a shortage? Like if I'm born uh, rich, there's an endless supply. Yeah. Do you see how you have to change mm -hmm. these ideas and, I, and you have to make those two ideas match? I also know that <clears throat> you definitely need someone like you their life to, to if you don't know what you're saying at least someone else is going to hear what you're saying and be like what the hell are you saying be like this is what you just said well and, and they'll be able to be like is that what i just said <laughs> well and, and then and it I, makes me think like oh, correct I did just say me that. if i'm wrong like correct me if i'm wrong i'm happy to be wrong but that was but right, like though. i just want to understand what i'm hearing and that's mm. the thing a lot of people talk and i'm not saying that you just talk mm. but we become so habitual which we kind of discussed earlier with our thinking Program. and our mentalities and our programming, yeah. that we we kind of need a different perspective sometimes because you're telling me one thing, but you still have this focus that there's a shortage and a lack and a scarcity. Yeah, and that goes back so into <laughs> what you said about if you see for cousin, that means if I'm saying you are born rich, then that means other people are rich. And if there are other people are rich, then I'm rich. It, but but it's going back to saying, like like I said, how you speak of other people is how they are and how it plays in a part of yeah, who you are as exactly. well. Exactly. Because we're all essentially the same. But saying that we're all rich, yeah, we are all rich. Can I say some people? Because there is some people that are short of money. Because That's their own fucking problem, Josiah. That has yeah. nothing to do with you, and it becomes your problem, and it when becomes you your issue when you're addressing yeah. their own scarcity and their own lack. Do you mm -hmm. see that? So, like, um, you can address that all day, uh -huh. but at the end of the day, their financial situation, rich, whether it be materialistic, mm -hmm. monetary, physically, whatever, because we can be rich in a, diff a lot of different ways. And that's where this conversation becomes even more interesting mm -hmm. because then if we go back and we define the word rich, you know, so anyway, just going off of it being a monetary oh value, gosh. you even assuming that there is a lack is your mentality playing into the fact uh -huh. that there's a lack. So, but that's not your problem. Mm -hmm. You're making it your problem. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? That's no, not your I see, I problem. see what you're that's, saying. That's their own bullshit. And you already know because you told me we we're born rich. Mm -hmm. So if they don't adopt that mentality, that's their problem, not yours. Mm -hmm. You already know the truth, which is we are born rich. You don't have to defend that. You don't have to put a but or a we or some people. It is the truth. Do you see where? So say some, you don't have for to. Some put, people, it is the truth. You don't have to. No. Oh. Why do you have to feel to like you have to qualify that? No, we are all born rich. Mm -hmm. There is no. 
I mean, sure, there's some in this and that, but that's not your problem. Yeah. You already have your premise. Yeah, that makes sense. Which is we are all born rich. Yeah. Those some that are out there are born rich. They're choosing that. Yeah, they're choosing not to. It doesn't dispute the fact or the truth. Mm. And you're only defending their poverty by acknowledging it. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I know it can kind of be a lot, but like... But, no, I, I, I'm telling you, <laughs> I've been listening to like people speak about things like this. Like, so like what you're saying, honestly, if someone else were to hear it, they would be like, what are you saying? But I'm literally picking up what you're saying because I'm applying it to what I know already. So, I'm yeah, I'm picking it up. I'm picking it up. It's it's you, your energy coming from you to me. Yeah, and not only that. And it resonates. Do you want these some people to remain poor because you can say, well, but some people have a shortage of cash, but you're you stated they're born rich, and so really what you want for them is to acknowledge their own righteousness and riches. Mm. So again, you you have to deny that there is a sort of yeah because there isn't, and you already stated that when you told me you were born rich. Yeah. That's good to know because I'm gonna need to know that I'm have, I I don't you even can't think I'm defend have, the bullshit. Yeah, no. that's other people. You can't let that you you know what your mentality is, mm-hmm. and you're you kind of start to go against it. I could be wrong. I no, don't know. Maybe you're not. I don't think not. you're wrong at all. And I don't because aim to be right. I just look for what the truth of the situation is. And I want to make that very clear. Like, I have no, mm-hmm. um, like, I, I no desire to be right. Mm-hmm. I simply seek the truth of the situation. So it's not about who's that's, right. That's cool. It's simply about what the truth is. Mm-hmm. And and in all actuality, we're going off of the truth that you told me, which has nothing to do with me. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So it's not about me being right. It's about what Josiah is telling me mm-hmm. and the truth. Mm-hmm. I'm... No, nah, that's good. That's good. You got really good at this. I could tell. I'm trying to get to that level. So my thing is... <clears throat> um, this is something that's just always been in my life. Um, I really find it interesting that you had mentioned on at least two occasions that you had this inclination to just do whatever. Like, you've said that a couple of times, that you were being guided and you followed that. And so throughout my life, I have acted on these kind of like innate feelings of just do this or just do that. And when I was 16, I lived right up the street, and I remember exactly where I was when I had this thought come to me and the thought was reality and dreams my ideas of the past and the future they're all the same like they're all the same up here they're right here right Mm -hmm. the only difference is there's this physical thing but in all actuality they're all the like what con I I can't even really explain it but I, I was 16 then when I had this thought made sense in my mind I just can't articulate it but um it's just something that for me I've always sought the truth and I think that when you just find the truth and you stick to the truth and you don't try to find these shortages or these defenses um it's just what it is and that's how life works and and with that, our truths can also be very dark and negative and ugly. So really, we determine what truths we want to pay tribute to. Just like right now, when you're telling me, um, we're all born rich, but there's a shortage, right? So there's kind of true two truths there, right? Because a lot of the population would probably agree that there's a shortage. Mm-hmm. So there are two truths, but it really depends on which truth are you honoring. And in all actuality, what's the truth? Truth, Like, I do believe we're all born rich. Who's to say we're not? Mm -hmm. And it goes back to that programming and beliefs that were taught to us. But anyway, 
Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is really good. But, um... Well, and really quickly, too, I want you to uh, show your note card. Oh, my note card? Okay. So, <clears throat> this, um... This goes along with my purpose because my purpose is rendering service. And the one thing that I go off of is the the money that hold on. Your 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 income isn't always gonna be in direct ratio to the need for what you do, your ability to um, do this need or something like that maybe provide your yeah your ability to uh, provide this need and the difficulty there is in replacing you mm -hmm. and the need for what I want to do is needed all over the world is to teach people about themselves teach people about the laws that govern this universe teach people how to be more effective teach people how to build their company teach people how to um, build themselves teach um, teach what's it called children paradigms and what or teach what teach children what paradigms are teach um, children how to build their own paradigm paradigms of their own and um, so they can live the, the free life that God intended them to live so okay that's, so do you want to share this that's with? a service oh yeah so, <clears throat> and you can maybe hold it up there if not it. we'll get a picture of it this so is what that, it says um, there we go. And I'll take a picture of it and prop right. it up on the video as well, if that's okay with you. Yeah, that's, that's uh, I don't know if you want to read it or... Yeah, I'll read it. <clears throat> it says, on New Year's Day... Wait, is there a date at the top? Yep. Okay, on, so I think that, you know... This, it has the date, the exact amount of money I want, the what I'm going to give in return, because there's no such thing as something for nothing. Okay, I don't believe that. That's, in my opinion, another well, top belief that we like to just yeah. say, hey, no, I don't... That's your belief. Yeah. You can have that one. I'm just letting you know. And we can expand on that later in a, another conversation. Oh, no. But. I had it backwards. It's, there is no such thing as nothing for something, I think. I don't Either way, <laughs> however you want to have that. <laughs> okay. I think it was nothing for something. Okay. I'm not sure. We'll and have I to would figure have, that out. It's in the Think and Grow Rich book. But um, and I, it could be in that book. I'm not sure. In the poverty one. So it says, on New Year's Day. Wait, you, the date? Start at the top. That that is that is the Oh. Yeah, it goes I have to read oh, that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, you're I'm fine. sorry. <laughs> On New Year's Day, twenty twenty five, I will have in my possession ten million dollars, which will come to me in various amounts from time to time during the interim. In return for this money, I will give my most efficient service, of which I am capable, rendering the fullest possible quantity and the best possible quality as a as of service as a sales representative of personal development. Hmm. Very nice. Yeah. Very so, nice. I, I like got my that name goal. signed on the back and that's my goal. So um opportunity has already struck me and I've acted on it as soon as possible because I had it like I said it was like a spiritual experience. So at work about approximately four days ago I was at work. Maybe I was it could be five. Could be five. Um, I was taking out the trash and I was about to be late for clocking out and uh, I was trying to hurry up. Um, I decided to, well, I had to go take back the manager their keys. So I was going up to the front and going back to the deli. So as I'm going back up to the deli, I hear someone call for, like, they, I think they said, excuse me or something. And I'm already turning the corner. So I, I stop and then I'm like, let me go see what they want. It was in the produce section. So a man, I, he really, like, I could just pick up his energy right off of him as soon as I met him. Like, he was super happy and really, like, enthusiastic. And he was like, hey, man, well, um, I I got these peppers, and I don't know which one's hotter, this or a jalapeno, this. Which one do you think? <laughs> I'm trying to make stir fry, and I really love food. And he was super enthusiastic, and I just liked his personality off the bat. It was super great, and it just made me feel good. So... Um, as he started speaking, he started talking, like, I said, I don't know, you know, I don't really know too much, so I said, ah, uh -huh. I said the other pepper, I don't know, probably hotter than the jalapeno, I don't know, I don't eat jalapenos or peppers, so, Which um, I'm gonna be stereotypical right now, like, aren't you Mexican? Yeah, <laughs> but I don't eat neither, though, so, 
when it came down to that, I just didn't know what to say. I just just said the other pepper. But <laughs> and then he says, well, he says like, wow. Not, uh, I think he asked me for my name. I think he asked me what my name was, and I told him what my name was. And then he said like, well, how do you like working here? Like, what do you do? And I was like, oh well, I'm a deli clerk. Um, I cut meat, things like that. Uh, he was like, whoa, that's cool. Like, how do you like it? I was like, I like it a lot. Like, Safeway's a good job. It's a really good job. It's the union, and it's really nice. So he's like, well, like, what are your plans? Like, do you plan on doing this and pursuing this? And I was like, no, not really. Like, I'm trying to move on to uh, personal development. That's what I want to do with my life. And he was like, wow, man, like, that, that sounds great. He was like, um, he was like, so what are your, I think he said, what are your plans after this? I think, I, I, unless I already said that. But then I told him that, and he said, like, like immediately when he started asking me these questions, I don't know if you've ever had this feeling, but some somebody has something for you. Like, they have something that you, you're about to get like, from them. Like, it's a click. <laughs> like, like, you're just like, what is he about to offer me, mm-hmm. give me, or what is it? Like, this is something for me. And I just had that. And then he was like, um, he was like yeah, well, I have a – he – he stated that he had a coach and a mentor. And that already struck me. I was like, oh, my God. Like, he has a coach and a mentor. Oh, and he's a chemist. Huh. So he's a chemist. And he's talking about, um, as well as that he's about to be, um, I think he said he has two more years until he could quit, stop being a chemist and uh, be financially, something like that, right? That's what he said. So then I'm like, well, he was like, I think I asked him if he reads or he asked me if I read. I was like, yeah, I read. Uh, I'm reading a book actually right now. It's Think and Grow Rich. And he said, I was like, have you read Think and Grow No, I asked him, have you read Think and Grow Rich to see where his mindset was at? Because I knew if he read it, then he would he would know not to be saying that. So, uh, or why he had gave him such a long time. Um, so, what he had, when Did I said that. It? No, he hasn't read it, but it's oh. on his list to read it. Okay. So, I immediately was like, okay, I'm going to go home and fucking finish this book right away. <laughs> like, I got it because I told him I, I read it. You know, I, I don't even know if I did, but either way, he, he thinks I read it. So, <laughs> um, basically, he was like, yeah, man, like, well, you, you seem like a sharp guy. And, like, like, you know what I'm saying? It was really nice to meet you and stuff. And I was like, well, can I get your number and stuff? So, I got it. He gave, I gave him my number, and he said that he was going to talk to his mentors and, and tell them about me. And um, he was going to give me a call in three days. So, three days and just straight just studying finishing this book understanding like that way even just like sitting at the coffee table like pretending i'm having a conversation with him like mentally having that in my head so i'm like all right um he called me three days so it was like the other day last night and he said hey man like i talked to my coaches and stuff and he said like wow you sound like a sharp guy and uh, you should you know what i'm saying they want to hear more about me and meet me so he said, like, whatever you want to do, um, maybe let's have coffee or I don't know if you like coffee or whatever you want to do. Maybe we could do it over the Zoom if you're comfortable or in person, whatever you like. So I was like, well, I'm comfortable in person and I love coffee. So we can go get coffee because that's what I had seen in my head. I was like, I want to have this, go have uh, coffee and talk over this. So um, he said, he called me and then he was like, well, let's have coffee and then he I guess we're having co- we're having coffee this Wednesday. Okay. So, I prepared like right as I heard that I was like okay like I was super excited right as he called me I was already jumping on the phone like behind the thing I was like oh and he's been, and this I could tell that like he's never had someone like me that was like willing to do this because like he was explaining like oh yeah you know what I'm saying like it doesn't like we don't charge nobody you don't have to sign up for nothing nothing and we're not selling nothing going door to door so. Um, I, I didn't even know what they were selling until that night. Well, what is it? They're, I guess I think what they do is they're, because uh, he's a student. He's not a mentor. You can tell that for sure. The, the mentors, they teach people how to, I think, build sources of income and uh, get out of debt. So, okay. So I was like, okay, well, I'm like, I really like you. You're a cool person and you're going to be part of my, you know what I'm saying, friends after this for sure because, you know what I'm saying, I like the way you are. Um, but what I plan on doing is when I have this meeting with him is show him what I know and you know what I'm saying and what I want to do with what I know and what I can do with what I know. Javier's home. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably like, who the hell is Javier? Should I go move? Um, all right. So we've had just a few interruptions tonight, which is totally okay. And it, 
it's going to explain um, the cuts and transitions <laughs> in the video, um, more or less. So we're going to end it as you can see it is now dark. And Josiah, I think it's going to take um, that on. However, we still need a title for the video. I don't know. I mean, we may just discuss that after well off after this as well. Um, but you know, go ahead and um, I think you were saying something about money. Okay, yeah. That well, you want to acquire in regards to his uh, definite purpose and how to um, how to basically well the the. The view I have of money and the perspective I have of money is that it, it will help me it will help me it will improve the service that I render far beyond my physical presence. So that if I have more money, like let's say I have a hundred dollars right here and I have a hundred thousand dollars right here and what I want to do is help feed hungry people, I'm gonna be able to do it more efficient with the hundred thousand then I will be able to do it with a hundred dollars. So th that's the reason why I want more money, not to bring more satisfaction to my life because I know that doesn't even come from money. I know it comes from within. So I want to have a lot of money that way I can help more people. And that's that's always been uh, a, something that I've wanted to do since I was a child, which was get you know get a lot of money, go to my buy my family houses or things like that, or buy what they wanted, you know, same clothes, whatever, you know, what I'm saying. So that's essentially what I want to do for other people is when I get, like when I have, uh, well, I already have the money. It's just, I'm waiting to transfer right now to my bank account. So <laughs> when I, well, there we go. Yeah. And, and I'm in even various amounts that I'm, I'm waiting. And now that I have a new means of, or, or opportunity coming to me, which I've asked for, which I wanted that way I could express my service far beyond what I'm doing right now, just as safe. So now I can have a new service and maybe my service can be jump started from what I know to helping people start develop developing multiple sources of income for the time being and learning from doing this to start creating of what I want to do, which is essentially teach people everything. So I just want to pinpoint on a few things. Um, First of all, in my opinion, it's not going to require this enormous amount of money mm -hmm. for you to be able to feed people. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to take anything more than the money you probably have in your pocket. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like We don't have to have these enormous sums of money to go out into the world and do good. Mm -hmm. We can just do good. We can give food we can buy somebody's food we can well if you have money in your pocket right because let's say if we but have, you do right well i don't but have any money in my pocket right now josiah uh-huh we always have money sure, but, but yeah. um, like mine. well we always have money yeah you know and uh even that i think that at the end of the day what you're and I could be wrong, but like, you're looking to implore um, kindness into our world, empathy, compassion. You can do that without money. Mm -hmm. You can do that by holding the door open for someone. You can, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to dispute the reasons of which you want money, but I just want you to understand and know that it's not, the more you make it about money, Josiah, the more it's going to be about money. The moment we can negate the money and do things just out of kindness and because we have a few extra dollars one day, mm -hmm. that there should be the premise. Mm -hmm. Not because you have money to do, th because we always have an mm -hmm. oppor opportunity to contribute being kind and so, being good to the world. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, I get that you're making money um, such a priority and I think that part of that in my opinion comes from programming and the idea is that we need to have money we need to make money and you know mm -hmm. uh, you know 
is, yeah, this I is want money. money. And you know, you're like, well, I'm going to take this money and I'm going to feed people that need it. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking buy some Louis Vuittons, you know? And well, you know, what's funny about that is that I'm still contributing because that's a company and it pays people. And mm. what's the point of luxury if we can't enjoy it? Or, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not going to help people that need to be fed, but and I already buy I'm not, saying I'm not going to buy Louis. <laughs> no, that's for sure. Um, I'm going to. That's that's definitely like. Uh, or or whatever you know. But I think that the more you make it about money, it's going to be about money. But the more yeah. you make it about happiness, that's good. I really like that. And the more you make it about just being kind, and doing that now. Yeah. Now, because you have every opportunity right now. So Not now when you have yeah. all that money, yes. but now. Yeah. So now that we're here and now that we're talking about this of the now, um, I'd say that it's in like what you just brought up is it's important to, let's say, what are you giving now? So like you said, you have all, you can give now without money in your pocket and you could give all the time and in the now you could get. So let's say I go home i have a choice to give already Mm -hmm. let's say i could go give love to my family that you know saying maybe they had a long day Mm -hmm. they're stressing because they had a watch i just want to yes this is saying so something like that yes and now i know that i'm in the now and all i have is now and that i should go Give. You can even go home and go through your closet and donate your clothes. You're giving, oh, I already did that. <laughs> you're giving right now, Josiah, by giving me your time and attention, yeah. and I'm doing the same. Do yeah. you see that we are constantly giving throughout yeah. life, and there is no monetary exchange here? Mm. Do you yeah. see that giving does not have to coincide mm. with monetary value yeah, like or food, money? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I get that now. Well... Dang. Yeah, see, I learned a lot off of this, and I think I already know what we should name this because, like I said, All right, I told let's you. hear it. I wanted, well, I wouldn't say I, what I want to name it already because I don't I have yet to think about that, but oh. I'm saying of the premises of what this is because, to me, this what this is is this is the starting point of my purpose and what I want to do for the rest of my life because what I, I essentially literally want to do what we're doing right now, which is record myself talking about these ideas and how I could basically have an idea from my mind explain it to convey it to you that way it can enrich your life and that's what we're doing right now we're enriching each other's life by these ideas freely freely (laughs) as well as um it just makes me feel good and that's 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 the most important part you know maybe i see myself well i already been seeing myself doing this just i want to see myself already just you know having um being at a desk having a camera right on me, having, you know what I'm saying, bookshelves in my office and having nice things on my desk like a globe or what's it called? You know the ball thing? Oh, yeah, um, yeah. is it a scale or oh, it's no. like a, uh, I know it where you hit it from one end and then yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's what about. I want, one of those. Yeah. And then my notebooks that I, because I constantly, con, 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 I always write, I'm always writing. Um, that as well as books all the books that I like and just pretty much like stuff that I'm, you know what I'm saying, for my study. So I think a fun name for the video would be a starting point. Yeah. Start because point. for you, essentially, this is, the this start is for the a mind. starting point yeah. for you. It so. is. And, and I'm going to look back and watch this video. And honestly, everyone's going to look back and watch this video and be like, wow, this is where he came from, from just talking about this uh, and this way and very not organized to now of how organized it will be well and you're going to involve is. continuously so yeah you know a starting point and that's day. all we're ever at is a starting point yeah. so all right with that i know it's dark <laughs> oh look we can see my teeth <laughs> um this is josiah everyone i am kate thank you all so much for your time josiah yeah. i don't know if you want to Bid them farewell. Yep. Until Uh, next time. Until next time. And always remember, good, better, best. Never let it rest. Until the good's better. Until the better's best. I like that. All right. Bye, everyone.